Okay, so following on from the last couple episodes, uh, where I managed to implement some basic networking, address socketing and stuff, and cryptography, where I finished up uh, doing key exchanges, encryption, and signatures, and the keys for those signatures, now comes the time where I put that all together and start and uh, implement basically a connection, what, I, what I'm going to call a connection, uh, where... Over UDP socket, I'm going to negotiate, like, you know, I'm connecting, then someone else is listening. A couple of rounds of, like, figuring out, okay, well, is this an acceptable connection? You know, let's negotiate on, like, the encryption, uh, which ciphers I'm willing to use. Negotiate the cipher, negotiate the keys, exchange those things safely, and then establish a connection. Which then the connection will be again over a stateless UDP, but will have should have like some TCP features, like um, some like you you'll have a reliability layer. You'll be able to like uh, figure out uh, stats such as you know how you know the often ping times and the reliability. Well, not just the reliability, but like you know packet loss rate and stuff like that. So to begin with. I'm not actually going to, I'm not entirely sure how like the connection negotiation is going to happen. So I'm going to basically do that organically, I guess, by basically creating it as I go. So first I need this. Uh, I'm going to need to add that connection CPP. I need to include Oh, crypto. Now, oh, I'm not even sure if, like, actually connection would be part of network. Maybe it'll be, like, something that's some other library that sits on top of both crypto and network. Probably. Hmm. Probably. But for now, I'll put it here so I can get it going. Uh, so I need a couple of things. I need these. Food. Yeah, create a network socket. And okay, let me at least get the very, uh, the very basic going. So, like, I need to establish listening socket, connecting socket, uh, the ports, and the address. So, um, test this. for now. I'll just call it connection. Um, yeah. There's a listening socket. Connecting socket, and I need uh, the address. So that's empty. And then, okay, so first off, I need to get the address. I need to get, like, yeah, I need to get the local address. So I need to, sorry, not enumerate addresses uh, based on. Uh, What I'm going to create is a const expression uh, C, what was it? Local address equals uh, IPv6 local address 1. I'll also need um, a listen socket. Sorry, not listen socket, the uh, port. It'll be 4200 and the connecting port 4201. So I got those. Uh, so there, I got the local address. I've got the address count. So how many addresses I received? So you have 32T. ADR count equals one. I have space for one of these. So we'll just do that. And the address, ADR. But that, so I need to make sure, of course, result value is successful. And I need to make sure that I only have one address returned, I think. Or at least one. 
No, no, oh, no one, because I have only one to accept, so. It could be, could there be more? No, because there's only, there's only going to be one loopback device, I presume. So ADR count equals one, because it could be zero, I guess, strangely. Yeah. So I, I retrieve one, and then I need to... Create a network ad socket based on the address, the C listen port, and listen socket. Make sure that's successful and do the same thing, but for the connecting socket. And so after that, this would be the point where the connection and then a bunch of time after that will be clean up so we got those two okay so connection um that is going to be can i put it no i'll put it in a separate file include that i'll add another file so i can just kind of somewhat segment this stuff off okay so i'm gonna have okay right uh i'm gonna uh there's a connection request local is requesting from the remote hey i want to connect to you i will have okay actually that's one thing for, even before that would be Packet type. I need some kind of way for this layer to have uh, basically the, to determine what type of packet it is. Is it a connection request, a reply, or okay, or termination connection termination, or is it like a data packet? I guess encrypted data packet, something like that. So there's not that many types, so I'll just kind of do uint eight t a p type for a packet type, and I need to include. Um, C standard int for that. So I got packet type connection request. As part of this connection request, I'm going to have a few things. I'm going to have to have something like the time. Okay. I'm going to be setting, like, when I request, I'm saying, here's my timestamp. This is when I started the request, so that when the, re so that if I get an okay or whatever at the end of it, I'll have some uh, ability to, to calculate the round trip time. So, you know, trip there, processing time, trip back kind of thing. So, um, Nectar will... Use this to determine round trip time. Um, I will need to when on on the request. I need to pass uh, my public keys for encryption and signatures. So. Uint eight uh, t for the moment, like this in in the final form, this would be dynamic. But for now, I'm just gonna like hard code it. So like I know it's gonna be thirty two bytes, I think for remote for uh, these things. So like AES takes a thirty two uh, byte key. This does as well, so that's fine. And the, the signing key, the public key is thirty two, private sixty four. That's fine. So I'll have what encryption public key. Uh, it's thirty-two. Went eight underscore t uh, signing public key thirty-two. And then at the end of this message, I would have to have you went eight underscore t uh, a signature for this entire. For everything up to 
that point. Which is 64, I believe. What was it? Uh, signature size is 64, yeah. So that's the signature for this me for the message up to this point. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not in time. Hmm. No, no, no. That I might be able to work with that. Okay. I would also need to. I need to establish, I need to send the ability to say, hey, which encryption and signing system am I using? Key type and encryption cipher, uh, which, because uh, I may not always have just basically one signing key, and I already have two encryption ciphers based on whether there's hardware acceleration for AES or not. So... I will need, so this is the connector going to the listener, to the, you know, how, okay, what about if there's, okay, maybe I can create like some enum, what about, if I have like uh, faux crypto, Key flag bits, something like this, with a uint thirty two key. So crypto encryption flags. The idea being, I can do encryption Encryption key, none bit. So, like, in this case, it doesn't support any... No, no, because if it doesn't support anything, it would return be a zero. No, because some... Okay, yeah, no, no. At some point, I'm going to, like, okay. I will have the server send... So, this is still the client to the server. So, I may need something, like, beforehand, which says... Hey, I am the server. Here's what I support. I support not having encryption as well as um encryption key. I support No, 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 cuz that, that doesn't make any sense. Having no key? But that would be Oh, yeah, maybe that's true if I don't if I just don't support encryption whatsoever for whatever reason. Um, so this is EB25519 bit, like that. Uh, this would be like what e equals 0x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2. So we got those two keys, type def, like that. So that's the key types that I support. And then encryption cipher flag bits which I you know I support uh, none I support cipher AES and then I would support X cha cha four I believe like that's highlight one two Four, perfect. Um, X twenty. Poly thirteen oh five. I'll, I'll just do the whole thing. So I would have. Hey, this is chosen key. Encryption public key. Uh, then I would have the cipher flags. This would be like this is the one that I've chosen. So chosen encryption cipher. And then down here I'd have 
almost the same thing for signing. Signing. I don't really see any reason to ever basically offer none. Because he even, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I do not know. But I do know, it doesn't matter because I would want to have it extensible to add new ciphers and new key types as they come along. Like, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so along with X2 or ED25519, there's like 448 that's coming along sometime soonish. So I want to have the flexibility for that. I need to have the flexibility for that. So this will be so signing, signing key flags. So this is the chosen signing key. And what what will happen is that this will, like I said, this is hard coded for now. But in future, like this will vary based on the size of on you know what's chosen. And this will be dynamic, and this one will be two, and so will that. So, hmm. I might want to do something a little bit differently on how to sign. I'm not, maybe like I do make this like a substructure. Because, okay, on the opposite side, once this is a, this connection request has been made, the connect the listener will accept it, verify stuff, and then send back either a request or a connection that says, "Hey, um, a reply," or it'll say something like, "You know, packet type connection closed." And packet type connection terminated. Or it'll be like the, the closed one is like, I'm closing it. Can you please, you know, I'm I'm try I am attempting to amicably close the connection. Can you close it on your end and let me know when you've closed? So um I expect a reply, and then what will happen is this one will be sent in back in return. The terminator will say, do not expect a reply. So this is if you're trying to close it amicably, and this is in response to that, or you're just closing it right now for, for whatever reason. You're shutting down, you can't wait, or whatever. Okay. Uh, otherwise, connection reply... I'll just connection reply. I get yeah. I'll connection reply. Whatever. So I have uh, this key type. I will have the this returned connecting timestamp so that uh, whoever requested the connection knows how long it took to do the round trip. I already know the the chosen encryption key and the cipher and the signing key. So then I would only need this this and this in return pretty sure if there's anything else I could do oh when I okay the, the round trip time I also need to like I would also have to do like um, proce processing time. So like, because because the, the round trip time will include the the time to travel to the destination, the the time it takes for the destination to process it, and the time back. So if I can do the, like the full round trip minus the processing time, I can get a, a more accurate ping time, or whatever it may be. Like if it's ten, like. If it took like five milliseconds to process, and like the whole the whole round trip was like thirty, then that means like you know it's, it's not 
15, it's more like 12 ping or something like that. You know, a difference of a couple of milliseconds. It, yeah, I think so. Anyways, time between leaving and flying. Something like that. Okay. Now, it still leaves me uh, kind of like, how do I determine? How do I negotiate between these two? I mean, I could make a connection request. Like, how do, how do I negotiate a you know mutually acceptable cipher encryption stuff? Because obviously I can't... There's no point in doing all this stuff and then sending it off and then having it rejected because the, the server, the listener, is not going to, does not support that. So, I, so I can, what, maybe I can do like a, do a, like a connection request, server replies acceptable types. I make the request to the server, I say what types I'm willing to accept. Server responds, choose these ones, here's my information, then I send my stuff to the server. So that's three, three jumps. Is there anything else? So I make the request, I challenge, server replies with the chosen values. And then I finish by sending my stuff back and then he sends stuff back to verify it was acceptable. So that's four, it's four um, back and forths or two round trips. Or would it be just enough to do three request? Send me cipher information. I send you my information once I determine what you're willing to accept. Okay, that, I think I can work with that. Um, I think. Is there any other, is there not anything else? I'm one, two... Three. Oh, what about okay? Something hmm, packet type. I'm trying to think of. Okay, I okay. I would also need some kind of thing that says like you know what is the version of this connection handshaking stuff agreement that I'm doing. You went to T. T connection. Protocol version, something like that, equals one U. So I, I need to make sure that the connect protocol version between both of us is correct as well. So I would need connecting timestamp, connecting. protocol version, and then this would have to be sixty four T call version. That should be thirty two, right? If that doesn't match, then end connection. Can I do this without having to like spend all the time on encrypting because encryption okay no maybe doing encryption stuff is expensive isn't it so i don't necessarily want especially for the server the server may be doing a whole bunch of things i don't want the first interaction with the server to always be hey i'm just gonna go right ahead and do a whole bunch of heavy duty encryption stuff that's not going to be great maybe i want to like do a round trip first very very light round trip where like there's no um responsibilities or anything like that there's no 
relationship, basically. I send something, he sends me something back. Like, no one's doing any heavy work establishing a connection type. Because that's effectively what would happen. If I, if I start off with this connection request, I've started a connection thing. But it's cheap for me, because I'm typically going to be, like, the client. I'm only going to be doing like w dealing with like one or two connections. The server could be doing a bunch, so just doing an instant jump into this, especially like if I don't have a acceptable key type. Because I want to minimize, I want to minimize the processing on the listener. So, this would have to be here because this would have to be like, you know, I this will be verified to be accurate based on a signature system. So would this. And these are both pretty heavy operations. Even if I do... So I want to have a, an initial... Okay, yeah. I need an initial round trip type, which is going to deal with establishing... Uh, workable ciphers. The client or client connects or the client challenge connects. No, not connects. What's what the something like um. What what what's to start off with? Not with a connection. Oh, let me uh look at UDP uh docs. Okay. So the thing I was thinking of is actually a countersign in the military. So like, you know, the, the infamous flash thunder thing from like the airborne. Uh, but like uh, at the bottom of the Wikipedia page, it basically goes into challenge response authentication, which is basically more what I'm looking at. So I'm going to have a challenge response round before I make the connection request. So, you know, which is very cheap. Neither side has to do as to start. Well, the client will still start a connection, but the server won't. Not until it gets to the it's a connection request. So, challenge request. Where I'm going to basically do the thing, hey, you know, I, no, not whether I support these things. It's going to be like whether you support them. So, struck. Challenge response. Uh, packet type. So I need to have request and response. So I know in the response, what's going to have to happen is there's going to have to be some stuff. So like there's, the, there's not the encryption key, but the supported encryption keys. Supported encryption keys. Supported cipher ciphers and supported signing. Signing keys. So that's gonna be at the minimum what I'll be doing with it, whatever it's. So at the very least, I can do challenge. Okay, much like with the connection round trip, I can do the same thing here. You went 64T, um, challenge timestamp. Send that back through. Okay. Um, and of course, I'm going to have to have UN 64 p processing time. Again, I'll add that there. And okay, I can also add protocol versions here as well. Uh, again, like so, I like uh, during this cheap early stage of the connection, I can maybe maybe eliminate uh, some unnecessary work. Uh, challenge timestamp. Hmm. 
Hmm. I may want to have. I'm not. Hmm. I'm not. Yeah. You know what? No. I'll keep it like that. So the flags. So of course these will have like may have more than one, and then this will have to have only a single flag set. This may actually also change. Like if I want to be more extensible to other libraries. That won't be a flag, but for now it's a flag. It'll be. It can stay a flag for now. So I, that's what I got. Challenge a quest. Okay, so let me actually start to implement this. So I'm going to have to do have something here, which is going to be doing the connection. I'm going to have to make the initiate connection. Um. Yeah, in the so void initiate connection. I'm connecting to a specific address, so you went sixteen T port. This is the port I'm requesting. And I don't really have anything. I'm as a client. I will probably okay the socket that I'm going to work on I think address port socket that the socket that I'm sending stuff or connecting stuff with or through hmm can I I do not know if I can have interact with a socket in multiple threads at once oh no cuz I for a socket, I would have to, in order to do like th data throttling or like to not overwhelm a socket, I would have to like have some kind of layer on top that has it, like the collection of connections and make sure I don't overwhelm the socket. Okay. Whatever. For now, I have a socket. And then I'll have something that just turns some kind of something, which I'll call... Connecting data. Something like that. Which I will return. Connecting data. Something like that. So, what goes into this? Uh, I, of course, need to... I already have this. So, I would create a challenge request. Great. And it's going to be initially that with dot p type equals challenge request dot challenge timestamp equals whatever now is. I don't have a good way to do that yet. Dot protocol version equals that. Then I would have to send that. So to the address that I had. Okay, so um, that's actually something I need to do here. I need to yeah, address address And the port. So that's some stuff I would have to set in this thing. So challenge a quest. I and if I can send it through the socket, then I would return hold on. Boolean for now. Okay, I need I need I need something for the time. Uh let's do chrono for the moment. So what? Standard chrono steady clock, I presume. Time oh no, this will be it. This will be um isn't it? Time point equals or um current time equals standard 
Oh no. Teddy Block now. So I got that. And then I would have to change that into I need a duration cast. Standard is this what what's the time I'm doing? Microseconds? Nano no not nanoseconds. Microseconds? Milliseconds is too big. Microseconds I think will be I think. Um microseconds, what's this? What's the ratio on this? Zero for the moment. That's a ratio of standard bit. Oh, one to one thousand. Okay. Nanoseconds is one to a billion. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. That's a bit too microseconds. What's that? A million. Do I have milliseconds now? Oh, yeah, it just goes to millis milliseconds, microseconds, and nanoseconds. So, yeah, it's a... Uh, no, microseconds is going to have to be it. So I got, I'm got. i going to microseconds. I'm going to need to do a duration cast. Oh, no. Duration cast to this type of... Current time dot time since epoch, I think. Dot count. There we go. Bring it to, into an integer type. Okay. So that becomes that. That's great. Fantastic. No, maybe not. Um, to UN64 and initialize the list. What? Uh, unsigned long. To unsigned long. Really? This is... Okay. Um... Sure, whatever. Long to unsigned long. I wouldn't have thought it would be a thing, but whatever. <sighs> okay. So then, at this point, I would have to send. So, co result set result so net send socket send data over the socket that I have. The data is, um, uh, of course, the final thing I would pack it, but for now I'm just going to assume that, that I can just run, I could just send it as is. So um, challenge request for the data size of challenge request. And to the address, which we already have, and to the port. Okay. If result.value not equals so if not successful, then it'll skip what's about to happen here. Go to that. If that okay, uh, so then at this point, like key connecting data would become address, address, port equal port. Is there anything else? Um, 
yes, there would be a th thing for timestamp. I need to like if if I initiate a connection or attempt to initiate a connection, and I use that timestamp, and then it fails, and then I start it, and then I attempt another connection really quickly, and then the reply, the challenge reply comes from the server from the in initial thing. I need to make sure like that timestamp and that is from the request that I'm trying right now, not the previous one. So I need to have like a thing of like you went sixty four t. Yeah. Uh, challenge timestamp? No, because this can't be permanent. I wouldn't think it's permanent. Um, expected timestamp for now. So this would equal expected timestamp equals that. So that would happen. So then, so this would, so I have this. Equals that. Require initiate connection to the address to the C listening, listening port at DDR for the connecting socket. And we got that. So that's sent out. Now I need to do the listen for the first part. So I need a struct for listener data. I don't have anything quite yet. Uh, no, I, I would still have no, for the initial thing, yeah, that's right. For the initial reply, I don't actually have any listener data. This will be lit done later. So, bool receive um, challenge request. What was it? A request. So, I got it from this address, this port, and on this socket. I don't have to do anything with it right now. It's just whatever. Like, I don't have to establish any listening data yet, so. I don't know. Okay. I am unsure as to how exactly to deal with, like, I may not actually be able to get, like, the, what was it? Processing time. Because it may, in a larger system, it would be different. I would have networking be done separately from processing the packets from that networking. Or would I? Um, Would I even know? I don't think there's actually any way for me, hold on. For a socket, when I get data, sorry, not not here, the source, socket, send it, receive data. Do I have, I don't have any, hmm. I don't actually have any data about when I received the data. Unless that would have to be something that I put on top of this. Because this is pretty raw. This is raw. Hmm. Perhaps. Okay. Put this on the back burner. Not very important right now. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, and I received data. I received... I would have to go through the listening. Hold on. Uh, I need to go. I need to create like a listening. Cool. Listen. On socket. Right now, I guess. Uh, 
Oh, network socket socket. I basically have this, and it would just return as soon. It would return what type of packet I received. I think maybe for now. I. I think so. Yeah. So oh, network address. Went sixteen to port. I have you in. I have a buffer eight underscore t. That's two kilobytes. See buffer two t. Receive size. So that's the buffer and how much I actually received. The while true. Hmm. I don't like this. For now, it should work. Receive size equals size of receive buffer. Then I go through the process of checking the socket for stuff. So receive. Which is the socket. I send in a receive buffer. Receive size, address, and port that I received the data from. That's great. Then I need to go through, like, if. Well, okay. If. We'll just have an easy out right now. If receive size is zero, so it didn't receive anything because this is not the, these are non blocking. I would just return or just break out, I guess, for the moment. Otherwise, data was received. If receive. Buffer, if the first byte is equal to the packet that I'm expecting for the moment, it was a challenge request, then I would process challenge request or received. That makes a bit more sense. Put this up here. Okay. We got that with the address, the port, and the socket that I'm on. I'm of course assuming that like if I receive requests on this port, that I will actually be sending stuff back and not changing up ports or even addresses if I'm doing something fancier. For now. For now. So trust the challenge request. I oh I now need the data, of course. But that and that. Okay, so um, packet size and Steve void constant style data. Just data size and or yeah, packet size pack data. That's what we received. So I want to make sure that um, if packet size not equal the expected, which is size of that. And standard abort right out of here. Otherwise, I'm going to do I, like again. This is super cheap. This is just me getting everything established. Then I'll have to refine it and fix up a lot of holes, no doubt. So this, I'm, I'm going to make this. 
into I'm just gonna cast it. The packet data. Okay. So it's that. So then what would happen here? I want to spawn with this stuff. So I need to make a challenge. Response. Where the packet type equals challenge response. The challenge timestamp is the challenge request that dot protocol version equals this. Like, even if they're different protocol versions, like, I, I'm okay with that, I guess. Then what's the point of me even sending it along in the first place? No, in I may want to have an early filter, perhaps, so I just don't respond if it's incorrect. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah, I don't really know. Uh, regardless, uh, at this point, um, I would also, so dot supported ciphers, sorry, supported encryption keys equals that and it's ciphers equals that that's software. So that's always, that's always available. Supported signing keys equals that. And then I also have the thing, the ability, like, um, if I don't even have it here, do I? No, I don't. Um, include pro crypto AES that. A is hardware accelerated. If that's true, then I would also add to challenge response dot supported ciphers or equals this. Then I would send that back out to the client. And then the client can make a, uh, can choose a cipher do heavy, do the heavy work of actually generating keys and all that, and the he very heavy malloc that's associated with that. And then on the rebound on the re challenge reply, oh sorry, the connection reply, then the server does the heavy work for that as well. Otherwise, because this, you know, the client for the client to do this, super uh, to initiate the connection, this super cheap for the server to reply to this, super cheap. But like actually doing encryption stuff, that's going to be expensive, relatively. So I want to minimize that. So again, I'm here. I have the address, the port, the socket. So I just want to, yeah, I basically want to send this stuff, don't I? And again, at this point, the server has no listening data or anything like that. So I just challenge response, size of that, address port. False. Actually, not just standard abort. I'm I'm assuming that it's all going to work as expected right now. And if it doesn't, then and then I'll just have to search through for abort locations. So I do this in all socket. So require, do that and return true. I've done something. Or sorry, return. Oh yeah, just return bool. No, no, re yeah, return this. I did a challenge. I, sorry, I worked on a challenge request. I want to make sure that's the case. Okay. 
require. Let's on socket. Listening the listen socket equals I processed that. Okay, um let me even see if I'm even anywhere close to realistic on this yet. It's not turn correctly. You're right about that. I processed the challenge request. Is this actually like part of... Yes, it is. Okay. So actually, why don't I just get rid of this? That and that and do this because this is what I'm looking for. I just want that. That's the only thing I want. So Test. actually, why don't I just debug? Test uh, for network. Great. Do this. Go down to about here. Actually, just make sure I go to, to here, basically. Okay. Actually, you know, let's make sure I... Because I do set that. So, connection data, port, address, IP block, blah, 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 one. That's perfect. Expected timestamp, whatever. Excellent. Okay. So... Now I need to flip back to listen on listen. No, that's so that's listen on socket. So I need to have another function for listen socket listener listener socket. Process listener socket. Okay. And then down here I'll have Get type what it says connecting socket uh basically kind of the same thing as that up there while true do this stuff if see um oh yeah else I'm sure I fail out if I don't actually do anything see buffer zero equals challenge response Which would be almost the same thing. Oh, I need the the connecting data. Star P connecting data. So this stuff and the connecting data. Return, uh, not challenge. Yeah, challenge response is the thing I I processed. So I'll make sure it's that. So now I basically do this. That, 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 P challenge response. And then from here, I would then make a connection request. P type equals that. Okay, at this point, I would have to do a number of other things as well first before I get to that point. I need to... Uh, 
do this stuff. Decipher. I need the I need to choose a cipher. So right now I'll just kind of I'll go through with these the basics. Encryption key, cipher. Okay. So I need the encryption keys. So okay. The connecting data is going to require. So that's the expected time. Oh, and I need to make sure the expected timestamp is as expected. I need to calculate that as well. Oh, crypto key. Drive encryption key for crypto key. This is temporary as well, because after I create the after I do the key exchange, I don't need the private key or the public key anymore. I would just need the shared key. Okay. Public key. Okay. Those two, however, I would need to maintain for not too off, not too long, actually. I don't think. Hmm. It would depend. Because I might only want to do... Because I don't want to have someone spoof a closed or a terminated. So I would want to have these... So, like, if... The, if, if um, I don't need to sign most encrypted data. The encryption... The AAD encryption already has, like, authentication. Basically, it has, like, a... In, some kind of like signing it has a way to validate or verify the data came from with the from the correct keys and stuff however the the closed and terminated don't i won't won't be encrypted they'll be plain text but i still want to be able to sign them i presume so i can ver validate that yes this came from the actual person trying to close the connection so i don't accidentally connect, close the connection that someone's trying to spoof Okay, so, yes, I do need to keep these as well. So, well, okay. At this point, I need to actually create the things. So, here we go. Connection request. Um, oh, crypto. Uh, ED. Create. Exchange. Key pair. I don't actually have that, do I? Give it to me. Connecting data. There we go. Private encryption key. Public encryption key. If that out why do I oh I need ed um, need that signing key pair so and key connecting data private. Public signing key, fantastic. Make sure they were created. Uh, yeah, at the moment I'm going to roll with just dot. Okay. Connecting timestamp. So I still need I need this again for that. Can I just do this? 
I should just be able to do that. Yeah, a bit of a mess, but there you go. It works. Checking timestamp equals timestamp. Uh, dot in protocol version to see protocol version dot chosen encryption e equals that dot Encryption public key. The data has to be copied in separately, so that's not going to happen. Equals nothing. That equals x cha cha for the moment. And dot chosen signing key equals. That. Okay, is there anything else? Uh, it's just the keys and then, then signing of the data. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, one, of course, mem copy uh, data, which is, so two, connection request dot chosen encryption cipher, sorry, uh, encryption public key. Into that location goes, oh, get key data from the connecting data. Public encryption key times the size of what one of these keys is, which is going to be that for now. That's one. And we've got two, so signing public key. Public signing key. That's the signing public key. And then at this point, I would have to figure out how to sign this. So I would want to. I want to sign everything except the signing bit, basically. No, this would work, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, that could actually. Mm, no, that looks a bit, that feels a bit weird. Um... No, 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 no. Okay, I just, I don't really know how to do this. That, that, signing request. I would have to sign. I can I figure out the size of this thing? Hold on. Down to this point. I it's sixty four thirty two bytes. Okay, this is offset. What ninety six bytes? This is offset ninety two bytes. Okay, I'm going to do it manually right now. So I just want to make sure that I I get the idea i'm going to obviously have to create some like this probably would have to become like a substructure and i just do that sign that so i have that a substructure i just do this sign that and then i have the signature afterwards pretty sure well maybe like i just get rid of the p type stuff put that as just 
keep that external. Get rid of the signature from here. Hmm. <laughs> it's quite possible. Okay, whatever. Um, what was I going to do? Result equals bow crypto sign data using the private key. So that's the connect connecting data. Private signing key. The data size is what? 96. I think it was. Uh, connection request goes down to 96 bytes. Okay. Key data is... Oh, it's the start of it. So, and connection request. Signature size is 64 for the moment. So, I can just say that. And it's sitting at... Connection request dot signature. So that signs that. So it signs all the data up to that point. And it was originally zero struct by that. The mem copy that in and that. Then I send that data over. Okay. Let's see if I can at least make it uh, that far. Oh, I'm not actually calling this. So of course not. Process connecting socket based on the connecting socket. Make sure this equals whatever I just processed, which would have been challenge response. Great, I presume. So, flipping back to this side, now I need to process listener socket. Uh, uh, okay, now we get to the point where I actually need listening data. Because, okay, listener data. What's going to happen is if the buffer equals, I've received a connection request. So at this point, I need to close that. Address. For socket receive size, receive buffer. That okay. Otherwise, data was received. Packet type connection request. Listener data. Listener data is going to be a bit more. Okay, so there's... Uh, right. So obviously now we're gonna uh, do establish the address and port. Um, I have a local would I? Yeah. So I would not need to hold on to a private and public encryption key because I would just I would hold I would in the function, I would create it 
do the key exchange, and then I would only keep the shared key. So I have a shared key. What else do I need? I also don't need to hold on to the remote public encryption key. Would I need the signing key after this point? Yes, yes, I do need a uh, remote. Remote, whoa, whoa. remote, can I get that right? Oh, crypto key, remote signing key. And I would also need uh, my own uh, private signing key and I am assuming that, yeah, every connection set will always have its own sets of keys just to make sure like it's so that you don't break one key and you have everything that that client's connected to or server's connected to that would be bad try to make it a bit harder what else is there anything else i need i don't really think so okay so i'm gonna do this or i basically copy and paste Sorry, this. This would be a new. It, this actually might be new, depending on whether or not I can verify. I initially, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure that this is a connection size of connection request. In this case, because of the variable size keys, that's obviously going to uh, change. But for the moment, still there. So Connection request equals that. Verify the signature. So if key connection request uh, chosen signing key equals uh, that was this. Then I need to verify results. Okay, po. Results. Result equals po crypto verify data. So I got the public key, which I would get from within. Yeah, key connection request. So basically, yeah, it has to. Oh, I need to create the key from it. Ooh, yeah, okay. So in that case, I may actually want to change these functions to not accept crypto key types, but actually raw data. Make it so I don't have to generate a freaking key right now. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So for the first off, right now, equals... Uh, okay, where is this? Right there. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. Exchange key, no, signing public key. Key, um, connection request. Signing public key.
No, because I would, yeah. This equals that. Success, great. It's not equal to that. Good. Okay, no, if, yeah. I create a crypto key based on the data that's inside the pre-connection request. It's I'm it's a set size for the moment. I can work with that. Then down here, I would use this remote signing public key, or get the the um yeah that. The data size is what is it ninety six again? Ba -ba 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 -ba, down to this. Sorry, ninety six. Connection request. So this is P connection request for signature. The address of that. This should work. Return true. So let me actually just kind of run through that right now. If it compiled, which it does not, because P listener data is that. And this now requires and that and that. Okay. Oh. Chosen signing key is that. Fantastic. I have a remote signing key. I'm going to generate it right now. Fantastic. I'm going to verify. Yes. Okay. Great. Actually, I should have probably double checked that it was actually real data, not just an empty signature. Connection request. Signatures stuff. Yeah, okay. And so this signature was ver validated or verified. Perfect. Uh, using this encryption public key as well. I like it. Okay. If that's the case, then I would have to um, I would have to do that, which is strange. I would have is the key not. Oh, I, right, right, right. Destroy crypto key. There we go. Otherwise, at this point, I verify the signature. I destroy the key regardless, maybe? Or do I hold on to it? Because do I want to start the listener data yet? Because I still want to establish whether or not this is a valid connection. Like, does it have... Um, yeah. Okay, this is public data. So I can actually validate this beforehand. If the connection request... Um... not equals C connecting connection protocol version, then I can abort right there. Easy enough. And then by this point, otherwise at this point, I'm good to go with the signature. 
I, I would presume. P connection request. Ah, uh, sorry, not uh, P. This in their data. Remote signing key equals remote signing key. Okay, great. Check all methods. Great, 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 great. So at this point, I have data. It's the correct protocol version. I've checked that it's been signed and signature matches. Okay, then I need to go with... Okay, I need to create the connection reply. Uh, the packet type is going to be this. Dot connecting timestamp equals P connection request. Connecting timestamp dot processing time I don't even have. Dot protocol version equals C that. And then I have to, uh, now I have to generate my own keys. So results equals change key pair P is in our data. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. No, these are local keys. Um, no, yeah, yeah, I don't need a public ex exchange key after I send it off, so, yeah, this works, this, this works fine. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, that, and that. Make sure they work, and then I do form the exchange right now. Form key exchange. So it'll be uh, my private key, private exchange key, public exchange key, and then it'll be like what the remote. What's the order? Remote, local. Connecting, connector. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll just do it. Yeah, I'll just do it with um, public change key. My key, local key, remote key. Um, Whatever that is. Oh, right, I need to, uh, I need to. Again, I need to <laughs> create a local temporary key. Yeah, exposed of after. After forming the key exchange. Okay. Um, 
Oh, public, blah, 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 key. And here's the actual key. So and the listener data. Paired key. Okay. Not entirely sure. Okay. So I have that. <clears throat> and then next I would have to, so signing keys. Uh, create signing key pair. Make sure it happens. Make sure it happens. Okay. Then I establish this. All right, what was going to happen? Uh, protocol version already done. Encryption, signing key, signature. Okay. <sighs> so I put the encryption public key, my public encryption key. So I need to mem copy to connection reply dot encryption public key. The key data of my public change key. This is of size that. I would also need to mem copy my signing key. Public signing key of uh, this size. Then I would need to, again, basically perform the signing. Where on earth did I do it? Down here, right? Yeah, there we go. True. So P listener. Oh, I wouldn't. Yeah, P listener data private signing key. Connection reply. It's that signature size. It's the signature at the location. It's not that. It's what? Offset eighty four bytes. Okay. Eighty four up to that point, and then we're going to send this off to the remote address port. Oh, yeah, and I also need to set key listener data. So after this point, key listener data address equals address equals port so that's been sent back
Hmm. And then after this point, it'll basically be like heartbeats back and forth. Something like that. Okay. Um, Proposal listener socket, challenge request. Let me actually get this. Listener socket equals challenge request. Challenge response. So it's not challenge response. It's connection request. That's what's just happened in here. So you come through to this point. We're going to go into here. Great. Do stuff. Oh, of course, I'm leaking some memory right now, but that's to be expected from the extra things because at this point, after this point, after this point, or this point. Yeah, after this point, no, 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 no. These are wrong, right? Challenge response. Okay, hold on. I'm looking at the wrong one. Here, public exchange. Here. Yeah, after this point, I no longer require. Do not require public exchange key, nor do I require the private key. Those are gone. So that does mean I'm going to require. Um, shared. shared encryption key. In here somewhere. It is in here somewhere. There you are. Listener socket. So back to the connection socket. Else if you get the channel reply. Process challenge reply. Sorry, not challenge reply. Mission reply. Okay. So this stuff again, challenge response, challenge reply. Sorry, connection reply. Eat. And then at this point, I just kind of have to validate the data again. So basically, okay. At this point, I basically got the idea on how I want to at least establish the connection. So I'm just basically going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the signature. I'm going to make sure that the sign. I'm going to verify the signature. I'm going to generate the shared public key from this using that. Okay. So. I'm pretty satisfied with how this connection back and forth is going to go. So I think I'll, I, I think I've spent enough time on this for now. So what I'll do is offline, I'll refine it. And probably kind of officialize it, get this stuff all get. So get this into probably like a separate library for now, or is separate library. I think a separate library, I think, yeah, I think maybe, no, I'll keep it. I'll keep it in here. Maybe. I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, I'll do that. 
I'll kind of uh, I'll refine it. I'll add in all like the missing cases, like oh, you know, I'm I'm not checking for uh, you know, change out the uh, standard abort for actual cases. If uh, things fail out at any point, like you know, send a connection terminate, or what have you. Uh, cases for you know not having not having a acceptable encryption and what have you. I'll get all that done, and then I'll be back with probably the next part of the connection, which is like when it's alive. So after it's been established here, when it's alive, basically like establish a heartbeat, get some statistics, uh, have the ability to delay packets. So probably some some networking stuff that you know check for like to artificially delay packets or duplicate packets or just drop packets, both on the sending and receiving sides, as well as, I'm not sure if I can deal with the reliability layer yet, or if I'll do that first. Something like that. They'll, they'll basically, stuff that deals with it being alive and closing the connection. So until next time, with, with all this stuff uh, refined, cheers.